a preponderance of presence versus real resolution in vocal mics. By presence, I'm talking about a boost in frequencies round about four to six kilohertz. The human ear is said to be most sensitive in roughly that region. By resolution, I mean detail and accuracy, time domain accuracy, etc. I'd like to tell you a story, and like all stories, you can't know if it's true or not. But I'm not attempting to deceive you in any way. Once upon a time, long ago and far away, inventors were working on microphones, amplifiers and loudspeakers. Must have been an exciting time. Many uh, possibilities in telecommunications and so on and so forth must have been in their minds. I would imagine that the military would have been very interested. Instead of using a carrier pigeon, you could talk to your generals, perhaps. And I imagine if the military are interested, the budget could be quite large for a successful company. Anyway, I'm wondering what was needed in the sound. These were early days and probably intelligibility was key in the early days, even now on telephones. You're not really interested in transmitting the beauty of any voice and the details you need to be able to understand what the person's saying. I'd imagine particularly for the military, you don't want to send your troops in the wrong direction. So I imagine that was key. I imagine then as things progressed, these new technologies would start to be used for music. With music, though, I would say that there are different aims. You do want to capture the beauty, I'd have thought, as best you can. If we jump forward, and we now have Mics and PAs, the early PAs that I've seen anyway from the 60s and 70s tended to have column loudspeakers with whatever drivers, often the same, maybe an 8-inch, 4 8-inch drivers. The early PAs. No way they're going to produce bass or high frequency. But they will produce the presence band and... They needed to be loud because amplifiers weren't very powerful, so you needed efficiency. So light paper cones, which compromises low-end response, they also needed to be portable. And these were early days. So what I'm thinking is that these microphones, even from that day, which have the presence push and the proximity boost for the low end, probably worked well with the rest of the system at the time because that's what it lacked. So the mic already is pushing those two areas and when it comes to that speaker which can't really do it, you're pushing a little bit more out of those speakers. And remember the history of intelligibility. Resolution in a microphone in those days? Actually, I've got one from those days, which is quite detailed. But on most systems, I think it would probably be lost. It's all expensive. And really, just getting heard was probably good enough. Exciting enough. Today, I think you could reasonably expect 50 hertz to 15 kilohertz from a PA. And if you spent a bit more, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. And if you spent more, you would expect 
a flat response and all good time domain stuff. So today, you'd expect, even from modest PAs, pretty good performance sonically. I'd like to tell you another story. A few decades ago, a friend of mine, sadly no longer with us, but he uh, invited me to his allotment. He was into growing organic stuff, special varieties and so on. And very interesting, I looked around and he gave me a bag of potatoes to take home. When I got home, I cooked the potatoes and I was astonished at the flavour. I hadn't realised what potatoes, different varieties of course, but what potatoes can taste like and subtleties within that. So if you like, because of the resolution of the potato, it was very present, I realised. When they were finished, I went back to the ordinary potatoes. A bit of a disappointment, as you can expect. And they weren't very present. Put them in my mouth, I knew they were there, but... So what do you do? You add salt. People say it enhances the flavour. Yeah, maybe it does. But what salt does, it lets you know it's there. So the ordinary potatoes with salt became present, noticeably. So what I'm thinking then is with microphones, that presence peak is a bit like salt or sugar. And also, you get used to it. You have ordinary potatoes with salt and then have them the next day without, and you'll notice. Let's see if this is all baloney. And uh, I'm going to do a demonstration. And we shall see what we shall see. Here's my plan. I've got four microphones. Earthworks SV33, which is the most neutral and natural mic I own and have come across. I have the Biodynamic M88 from 1962 design. Neumann KMS105. And a USA Shaw SM58. The SM58 is going through the TC Helicon with everything off to start with, but later on I'm going to engage the tone button which adds presence and a bit of compression and some de and some uh, anti-pop stuff. So a lot of shaping but designed very much for that presence thing so we can hear what that does to a microphone which already has some of that. So I'm going to move from the SV33 onto the Biodynamic M88. I'm now on the Biodynamic M88 and immediately perhaps you can hear eh, eh, right at the top t -t -t, and eh, around there and you can hear a brooding sort of hmm with a, I would say, a, not detailed so much down there, kind of, but it's got a little bit of something going on, a little bit of old school I feel. So that's the Biodynamic M88 designed in 1962. And it's quite, uh, to me, quite fast and transparent around about those areas. You can hear what's going on. So quite an exceptional mic from that era. And I doubt most of the PAs in those days could have uh, done it justice. This is the Neumann KMS 105. And again, KMS 105. And if I bring it closer, proximity not as low as the biodynamic. So you've got salt and pepper, if you will, either side. On this one, either side on this one. I call this one the mascara because something about that really uh, comes through nicely. And this is the American SM58. Immediately you can hear not so much detail, I feel. A little bit ragged at the top, but t -t 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 cuts, cuts through there. Uh, I'm struggling to hear within it. If I bring it closer, you get some proximity. Uh, it's a little bit woolly. So that's the SM58. So what I'm going to do now, all of them, apart from this one, have that shaping for proximity. I'm going to add even more on the SM58 with the tone button. Here it comes. This is the SM58 with the tone button. Can you hear? Now, 
Now, now, I do use this very occasionally. I'm going to take it off now. See if your ears think this sounds a little bit dull. I'm not suggesting to you, but uh, if if I'm when I was on the boats, there was engine noise down there, and people were talking, and da da da, and the expansive sound of these to get to hear that you'd have to be so loud for all that to come through over the din that it would be unacceptable. So there were times when I found that actually just being heard, you know, to give up my artistic uh, aspirations, just being heard is what it's about. And I'm going to put it back on now. And you can maybe imagine that there, up there, you're going to hear what I'm saying or singing all the words or whatever. Or if I'm going to make any announcements, I'm doing that deliberately now. If I'm going to do any announcements, you'd uh, certainly notice it. What I'm going to do is leave this on for a little bit to notice how you get used to salt. So remember, we know the SM58 has got quite a presence peak already, and it's been added to a little bit of shaping and stuff and compression with this. And I'm going to go from this, as you're now used to it, to as near to natural as I can muster. Now I'm back on the SV33. And I don't know, do you find it sounds a little bit dull, perhaps? On the SV33. Does it sound a little bit dull, perhaps? On the SM58, does it sound a little bit Mickey Mouse? So, let's get rid of that. I think you've heard enough of it. It is useful. For me, in an emergency situation. So, now we're back to everything flat. So, what I'm going to do is just going to recite something, one mic to the other just so you can get to here, really. USA SM58 flat. Better check. Yeah, all flat. Intelligence is patient. Intelligence is kind. It does not envy. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Intelligence is patient. Intelligence is kind. It does not envy. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Intelligence is patient. Intelligence is kind. It does not envy. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Intelligence is patient. Intelligence is kind. It does not envy. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. I'd like to tell you one final story. There's an artist. She's very good. She does still life and figure and landscapes, but still life really is her thing. And she's very particular about colour. She's lucky to enough to be able to buy a studio in Provence, in France. And she was having a conservatory built so that she could do her painting when it's raining. She went to a glazier and said, uh, this is what I want to do. And they said, yeah, yeah. So I, I need good glass. I'm very concerned about light. I said, yeah. I said, well, we can offer this. It's got a lovely uh, orange tint to it. She said, no, 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 you don't understand. He said, what, what about this one? This one's got more of a, a lilac hue. She went to another. Same deal. Went to another. And this one said, we pride ourselves on our glass. We know artists like this area. This glass is as true to daylight as you can get. And we welcome you to do some tests with a piece of paper, photograph it and all, and take it home and have a good old look. So that's what I'm wondering. When I look at a lot of microphone manufacturers' websites, I read a lot of stuff like, it's got this sound, it's, uh, it's bold, 
It's this. It cuts through. I'm thinking, but I've worked on my voice. What's going on? And I wonder if, I wonder if it's a hangover from the days when that was kind of needed. I wonder in this new decade, happy new year, by the way, is it time to stop catering to the inadequacies of the 20th century and embrace the capabilities of the 21st? Happy new year once again. See you next time.